On stage, a ballet dancer is serene, elegant and measured. But behind the scenes, it's a different story. Do this. Derek says, this is what it is. Do it. With unprecedented access to English National Ballet, one of the UK's elite dance companies, this series will reveal what it takes to put on a world-class ballet. We start again. If you want to do that, we can take you out of this. Take Please take me out. That's the way you want to behave. This time, the dancers are under pressure in the most dangerous ballet in the company's repertoire, oh. Romeo and Juliet. As I came to Stebbin, caught the blade and stood in my hand. Already this week we have three guys off. This is terrifying. And with government cuts looming, major decisions must be made. Well, are we talking about fewer members of staff, you know, fewer dancers, which is devastating. To succeed, they must endure injuries and disappointment. Why do I go through the pain? Is it worth it? All in the pursuit of perfection. Now we can start to do bad cop and get them scared. That's a ball breaker. English National Ballet is fighting for survival. Max Westwell and his friends James Forbat and Chev Denot are dancers at English National Ballet. Thank you. Thank you very much. If I tell someone that I'm a dancer, it depends. If I'm like this, holding a pint, they're like, you're lying. It's definitely a joke. Or I, people are like, you're like a rugby player or a swimmer. Or a, no, I never people are like, <laughs> generally, I don't get believed. <laughs> yeah. Can you do the splits? Can you you get that a lot. Yeah. That's a quite a general Can you do the splits? Can you do the splits? Generally, you don't do the splits unless you've had a lot to drink. And then... <laughs> I do the splits all the time. No, you do. No, no one ever says they don't believe me when I say I'm a ballet dancer. Really? Funny enough. Why do they believe Jay? A um, yeah, simple answer to that question. The simple answer is he's gay and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I. I have no idea. I'm maybe a bit bigger or... But so is that the stereotype then? Right? Yeah, that you think you're gay. It's like me and, me and Chev live together. If we say me and Chev live together, they instantly think you're gay, even though you, you were not. I think it's a cool job to have. Because I, I don't wear li little hats like this and sparkly tops. <laughs> 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 At the home of English National Ballet in Kensington, West London, 64 dancers rehearse daily. Max is one of 32 men in the company. Yep, your rhythm for the pirouette is ta da ya da ta da yum pa ya ta ti He has been with English National Ballet six years and is a lower rank dancer. Yeah, same again, yum pa Max is one of the workhorses, normally dancing the group numbers and bit parts. Other way, Max. There's a certain amount of waiting in line. I did about two years of just literally doing the lowest of the low and trying not to kill myself. To move up the ranks and be promoted, Max needs to be cast in a lead role, something he has never done before. There's always an eye watching you. It's massively competitive. If you slack off and you're not in good shape and you don't look good and you're not improving, you're not going to progress. And you've got to deliver, otherwise... I mean, if she wasn't impressed then, they'd go back up to the office and be like, oh, I'm not sure about him, he doesn't look quite on top of it, and then they'd waver. At 24, Max is still hoping to be promoted. But for 36-year-old Daniel Jones, time is running out. He's been with the company for 19 years and has never reached the highest level of principal dancer. I've had a very difficult period with having injuries and it's meant that I've been taken out of roles that I would consider to be good and that I could do. And 
there's never any guarantee that I'm going to get opportunities again in the future. The glamorous dressing room. You know, ballet is what I know. It's been my life. I really believe that I've got more to give. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think that. The man in charge of who gets promoted is artistic director Wayne Eagling, and Daniel is meeting him to discuss his future. Come on, come on in, Danny. Okay. I'm asking this this year everybody the same question: is what is your aspiration within? The company now. Do you see yourself stopping? Mm -hmm. Do you, you know, at a certain point, you know, because yeah. we talked, what did you say it was the twilight of your career? I, I'm ambitious to get promoted, I'm ambitious mm. to go higher in the ranks. I'm understanding that there's lots that influence those decisions and there's other people, you know, around me that lots I'm of people up against money. Uh, but money, yes, <laughs> but I am, you know, yeah. I, I've, I'm. Your ambition is to really go beyond being a soloist. Yes, absolutely. My advice to everybody that's, you know, beyond 30, <laughs> to start really planning, you know, what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Then people just think, oh, I'm just going to keep going until, I don't know, until I fall off my perch or something. Yeah. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Danny. See you. Okay. Hi, Danny. They've got to be really prepared to be told uh, that's it. I mean, he works very hard. It's not like he's out of shape. He's just chunky, you know, and that doesn't go well as you get older. Did you hear that? Personally, I think he's kind of reached the level that he will get to in this company. Everything's cracking. Everything's cracking. <laughs> It cracks at the beginning. But the dream never goes away, you know, it's... Uh, uh, and I, I, I kind of like that. If I stay in the company and do walk-on roles, it's going to destroy me. It's how everybody else looks at you. And what do I do this for? Why do I go through the pain? Is it worth it? At the age of 36, people think you're a complete loser. The dancer's next chance to win a significant role is in the upcoming production of Rudolf Nureyev's Romeo and Juliet. A huge cast is required. But the ballet staff are struggling, as there are not enough male dancers in the company. Everyone's going to do quadruple roles. Yeah. The company was extended. Yeah. Rudolf insisted that the company was bigger for, for Romeo and Juliet, yeah. Mm, yeah. and hence the fact it was 77 dancers. Mm. That's so, why we have we, the problems the all boys. the time. Yeah. Because there's just not enough boys in the company to, to do it. I'm talking about 20 something less. less. At the moment, thinking about doing it again, everyone's going to do quadruple roles yeah. again. With, mm. with the money we get from the Arts Council via the government, it's not enough money mm. to be able to employ enough dancers to be able to do our big productions. Mm. It's an opportunity for us to take a slight risk, but it's a risk we have to take because but, we are undermanned. Yeah, but so I, don't think, I don't think we can count yeah. it as a risk because something as big as Romeo is going to have to be people with talent that we mm. think we can push a little bit mm. further. We, we should know by the time we've cast them that they're going to be good enough to go on to do the roles. And, yeah. Uh, so it, in a way, it is a it is a bit of a risk, but the boys have to be in top condition. Otherwise, this will be their undoing. It's the day of casting for Romeo and Juliet. The ballet staff are fighting to stretch the small pool of dancers across the demanding three-week tour. Every dancer must be considered for any role. Ray, mm -hmm. Tadu, mm -hmm. Nakamura, Drummond. Casting is so important to the dancers. You know, it's their, it, it's life and death sometimes. Oh my God. <laughs> Westbound? Not, not Westbound. Is that Max's first Romeo? He's never done a leading role. No. 
As a first artist, when the casting goes up, you, you expect to be kind of first cast for the group numbers. Uh, but anything more than that uh, is a bit of a bonus. Fifth cast, Romeo. And a whole load of other stuff. Max doing Romeo is the, the, it's such a great opportunity for him because he's got to that point now in his career. Um, it's time to push Max to the limit, really, because this is the biggest thing he's ever done. Realistically, this is the last chance that I'll have to do Tybalt in Romeo and Juliet. And if I'm not down to do Tybalt, then it's game over for me. It's literally, I've got to go, I've got to leave, and I've got to wake up and realise that the dream is over. Although Daniel and Max have been given the major leads of Tybalt and Romeo, Max also has to learn another five more roles. You basically learn in every role. If it breathes and it's a man, I, I need to know it. <laughs> I've had a lot of work before, but I've never had this much. The production of Romeo and Juliet is being restaged by Patricia Ruan and Frederick Jahn, who both worked with the world-famous dancer Rudolf Nureyev throughout his career. The reason that we have been given that this kind of responsibility is because both Rick and myself were in the original cast. I created the role of Juliet and Rick created the role of Tybalt. It is for us to try to pass this on to this generation. It's, a, it's a, a challenge and it's also very touching in a way because you think, you really feel that you're bringing something back home to where it belongs. Back just a bit, sweetheart, thanks. Just so we've got a bit more space between your frocks. Nureyev created most of the original work of Romeo and Juliet in the same English National Ballet studio 34 years ago. It's quite a responsibility, actually, because you have to reintroduce Rudolf, the man, to this generation of young dancers. I'd come off a guest touring slot and bought myself a video camera. It was one of the first brands that ever came out. And I set this camera up right in the corner of the room here, in the studios, and just started filming. Nureyev was a, was a mega star when stars were really stars. He was the king uh, of dance. And this is, this is just gold dust, this film now. I've seen the company 35 years ago. Nothing has changed. The same atmosphere, there's a smell about a place. Rudolf's presence is still there. You can feel it. In Romeo and Juliet, Nureyev revolutionized male dancing, giving the best roles to the boys. Suddenly you had a ballet where every act, what you see most of, is fellas doing their stuff. He really did put male dancers on the map as people who have their own choreography that's created for them, as opposed to the old tradition, which was that the males were there just to make the ballerina look beautiful. Nureyev created the role of Romeo for himself, the most technical in the ballet. Well, basically, this is the biggest role I've ever got, um, and this was always the dream, to do this one. So I want to do it as well as possible, and I've got a month to get it down. Um, so I haven't got a lunch break all week. Um, anybody who's tackling a principal role for the first time, it's a huge thing to take on. Not just his technique, but also his acting ability, his partnering skills, his stamina, that's for sure. 
Max must be aware that he's carrying something that's really quite special. Not to mention following in the footsteps of one of the greatest dancers ever. Then she comes down again, arabesque, almost. That was first rehearsal. Um, just kind of retain it all. I'm now going to go upstairs and do uh, Romeo and the Volio jumping about at the beginning of Act Two, I think it is. If it moves and it's male, I've got to learn it, basically. After four hours, Max is still learning Romeo and another major role at the same time. Two, three, four. Yeah, step around the jump this way. It's hard to get one, let alone both. I haven't even got one yet. The ballet staff have four other Romeos to train as well. To be honest with you, <laughs> God knows. Um, a nightmare. <laughs> I'm being honest, just because it's very quick and I have to watch two places and it's fine. It's always that like and then we'll sort it out from there, but it's, it's a lot. Daniel also has a busy schedule. As well as rehearsing Tybalt, his spare time is spent helping with the dancers' welfare. Oh, Sarah, yeah. famous over time. She's teaching me now how to get money. <laughs> he is one of the members of the dancers' committee who voice concerns to the management. The dancers are always going to be pushing and fighting for as much as they can get because they are, in general, for a short career that finishes on average at the age of 35, they're on, we're on a very low salary. Dancers at English National Ballet start on a salary of £23,000 a year. Only the principals can earn over £60,000. At the moment there is a dispute as to what our pay increase will be from last April. So we've been told 1% and we've been told that they can't really budge. The pay dispute remains unresolved. I've come in for a meeting. But today, management have called the committee in on a separate fundraising initiative called Sponsor a Dancer. It's just finding new and unusual <clears throat> ways of trying to get people investing in the company. And I think, you know, you are our bi biggest asset, you know, and people give to people, so it's really important that we make the most of you as an yeah. asset and realise that it could be quite contentious. Because obviously the money doesn't go directly to the dancer. Is it like sponsor a dog, where you get like a, <laughs> yes. you get like a yes. newsletter? <laughs> <laughs> it's only fair that you, you know, if you're attracting sponsorship and it's going into the pot, I should get paid. And the company might be benefiting by £20,000, and it costs the company yeah. £50 to have the yeah. debt. But you know, like, yeah. I mean, it's... Just it's remember that the company isn't benefiting from £20,000, we're all benefiting from £20,000. Well, we... So it makes sure... It is the company, it's not we. We're, we're our negotiation. We we're on the same we're salary, the same. we don't... We always get paid the same. We do. We've got a very low payoff for this year. I, I don't think you realise what sort of financial situation yeah. we're in. If, the, if we don't raise... That's because we never ever see the figures. Well, OK, we can talk about that another time. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I, show us the figures and then we'll... Okay, I think that's fine. I don't see why we couldn't show you okay. the figures. But I think it's important to know this £20,000 is going into the general pot that pays your wages. Yeah. That's what I say. Thank you. Bye. English National Ballet is facing financial uncertainty. Currently, their £12 million annual budget keeps 200 staff employed. But since the new coalition government came to power, there is a threat that the £6.8 million subsidy might be cut. Okay. Managing Director Craig Hassel is meeting management to discuss the latest speculation and what they should share with the company. <laughs> the only information I have now is what you two got from the Arts Council briefing. There's likely to be a cut in the following year, a one-year cut in the 11-12 financial year. So even though it's not definitive, the fact that they're suggesting that 10% might be the amount, that's enough information to pass on to the company. That's nearly £700,000 a year that we have to find. And I want to try and impress upon people that we're talking about a substantially different model of operation. And we don't know quite what that is yet, but it won't be like we are today. Mm. Something about restructure 
and redundancy. I just, I don't want to spook people, but I think I need to say, we have to consider all ways. I think if you're going to use words like that, it's not, it's flexible working, it's, you know, reduced hours, yeah. all this thing. Because if we don't have something, something a bit radical, we just, we just can't keep putting big story ballets on stage and touring the country. That's just, it's not enough. It's not enough, it's not enough for the future of the, of the company. With finances tight, it's essential that the current production of Romeo and Juliet runs smoothly. But by its very nature, the production is unpredictable. It's quite a dangerous ballet because we have lots of props. You've got the acrobats, the jugglers, the flag. And then with the sword fights, there's boys who would slash at everything. So as soon as you whip it to the side, someone gets whacked in the head. This is the first rehearsal of the Tybalt and the Kushio fight. It's going quick. We're short of boys, so we have to be very careful with them. Um, we are trying to be, but we've got to get the steps learnt within a very short period of time. The weaponry in this production is about as real as it gets. These are the type of blades and swords that you use to nick to your opponent, so eventually they bleed to death. It is pretty gory. Whack, okay. One, one, two, three, four. They get very excited with their, um, uh, with their movements, and they put too much into it. This is where things go wrong. They have to be really so controlled. You know? This brings back memories. Okay. That's the band you cut. You, you better get that, put something to sterile, sterilise that. Yeah, good, thank you. Those things have been all over the floor. You're right. It's OK. Worse, worse. Rudolph, I used to hear the blood dripping off the stairs, didn't I? OK, tick, 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 tick. It's bleeding now. So, so this fight with the sword and with knife. As I came to stab him, he uh, caught the blade instead of my hand. It would have gone through, but it stopped and it went. <coughs> and I heard it. You put this on and then put yeah. that on. Yeah, sorry, no, sorry. Already this week we have three guys off, one with a head injury from elbow hitting his head, we've got sword fight injuries, we've got stress injuries already, so, and we haven't even finished Act One yet. So I can have your attention, please. You know, we're a big organisation, we have a lot of people employed, and one thing that's going to happen for certain is there are going to be cuts to the arts budget. Now what that means in real terms is we have to reduce the company's size somehow, because I don't think we can increase income, by about £600,000. That's an awful lot of money. So for a company like us, and we, have, we spend about 12 or £13 million a year, £600,000 is a lot of money. And I suppose part of the message today is this is not about us doing anything wrong. We haven't failed in any way at all. You know, our reviews are fantastic but I suspect the cuts that are going to be foisted upon us for the following three years are going to be more than 10%. And I, and I don't know yet how we're going to affect that scary amount cut, but it's going to have to impact on what we do as an organisation. <laughs> I think everyone was a bit shocked, really, although it's hard, it's hard to gauge. I think we said everything we needed to say. And it's not about EMB, it's about the environment, so that's the message which I think came across, which is good. I think it's, it's been inevitable that it, you know, cuts are coming. It's just hard to hear it. And despite the company having a dark cloud over it, we as a committee believe that we should fight for whatever we can get. And that means pursuing, we're not greedy, 
it's no, nobody, it's way below RPI, and it's, you know, it's, it is very reasonable what the dancers are asking for, but, you know, if big cuts are coming, then there's no, that's going to change everything. Very interesting. No one really knows. And it's still speculation mm. at this yeah. stage. Yeah. Nobody's saying anything for certain. What, I mean, the pay increase that we're doing, that we're going for, what? That should just, I just think. I, I just don't think we should be worrying about I say getting a pay increase at all. I think we should be worrying about whether the pay is going to go down, yeah. whether they're going to cut dancing. Because really, logically, what, we're the biggest, dance is the biggest thing they have to pay for. So cutting our salaries would save a lot of money. No? We do, we're not here because we want to make money or that, because it's because we, we love being here and we love dancing. As long as we can make it work, I think it, the dancers would do anything to help that. We're not, yeah. we, we're not going to stand in the way of it. And if there is a problem, then we need to address it, address it all a, together as a company. You know, I think we, we're in a position now, we've got to justify our existence a bit more. That's how I feel. Mm. Like, None of us wants to see the com to company fall apart. Well, None of yeah, us. Yeah, of course. With two weeks left before the first performance, rehearsals have intensified as the dancers must learn their own roles and fill in for the boys out through injury. That's a very bad line you gave her on the lift. Other leg, Sarah. Chad, if you're partnering her from behind, where's the interest? I'm sorry that I misunderstood the correction. Well, that's about the 25th correction that's been misunderstood sorry. this week. So we try it again. The remaining boys are working harder than ever to finish off the production. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. Right. Yeah, oh. great. Very good. That's what we're looking Except. for. Except. You're right. Yeah. You all right, you know? I've got a bust of wrist, yeah. All right? It's really painful. You know, are you okay? Do you want to get some ice? What's happened? He's really gone over on the hand during acrobats. Fuck. I knew those bloody acrobats would yeah. get them. Smelling a bit, I'm afraid. Mm. And then the pain is coming from, yeah. from here to there, and yeah. it's going under yeah. here. Because you've had your weight through it, mm. and you know you have that into that position mm -hmm. there, we will have to check it out. Oh, you poor thing. It's part of being a dancer in a company. If you go through your entire career without an injury, you're unique. I didn't see it happen at all. I was looking at some <coughs> casting. Yeah. It's on our shoulders um, to tell them that it's happened to us all and that's the way yeah. it goes. Unfortunately, you'll get injured. It was Junor's fault that he got injured um, because he didn't listen to what Rick was saying. He, instead of going out of the circle, he went into the circle and um, Grant rolled on his hand. You did much too quickly. For the yeah. they come down, you've got to stay we up. feel for them, yes, and we think, oh, what a shame. But we don't have time to hang about for them. Yeah. Barry, Barry. We need to test the waters here. Just have a go. Just jump a little bit high. Than you, you know, we, we are short, very, very short. It's not a place to be at the moment, the staff room. <laughs> it's a little bit... Uh... Yes, yes, each day you come in, you think, Who, now who's injured today? Yes. There's a big list, a big cross against their name. So um, it's getting a bit desperate. So I watched a little bit yesterday, I mean, some of those boys don't even know this step yet. I, I mean, I don't understand why they're so slow. We've actually got a cast, a certain cast which could be ready, but because we have to mix them through the generosity of your casting, so it's the same, you know, because everybody yeah. gets to go here, yeah. there's the mixtures of casts which create the problem. Yeah. They're touching different bodies, we're going in all yeah. sorts of elements like that, which, which cause problems. I mean, for example, Max yesterday 
was Romeo the day before he'd been Benvolio. So in the Podatoise in Act Two, he's mm. meeting himself coming back the mm. whole time. Yes. <laughs> you know, he's meet. dancing, yeah. he's partnering himself yes. Yes. in reverse. And understandably, there are moments when his, he looks like... Mm. Which, who oh am I? God. Uh, yeah, he yeah, doesn't which, know yeah. what his own name is anymore. I, I'll be honest, my biggest fear at the moment is the dramatic content, which m most of the time is just not there. Yeah. I mean, there's more, there's more liveliness in the Topshop mannequins coming up Kensington oh, really? High Street. Mm, okay. yeah. um, and somehow we've got to get through to them. They have to start practising that now, because otherwise the balance will go. There's only one week left. Now we can start to do bad cop and get them scared. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's no all good. All right. They're not on the same legs, I'm afraid, these boys. What did I just say? What did I just say you do on this step? If I want the step I just stood up and demonstrated for you. What did I say? Oh God, this is terrifying. The feeling at the moment, and we're all a little frustrated with the company, they don't seem to get it, that if you don't show us what you're doing now, we can't rely on them to do it on stage. And we're still getting quite a negative response from most of them. Again. If you want to do that, we can take you out of this and we can take Please you out Please take me out. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. If that's the way you want to behave, you know, I'm we won't give it a constructive criticism. If you would get the corrections right that you're being given, then we would go on to, well, you're not doing it right. Thank you. Go and leave. It doesn't matter about you. Go and leave the room. Thank you. Jane, who have we got else to put in? Can I be allowed to say something to all of you? When you are given a piece of information, a correction, that's all it is. It's not something that's against you. It's something to make your lives easier when you get on stage. A correction is not a criticism. And you confuse the two. If we're spoken to like children and the tone is really not nice, we're all adults in here. We all. Right, that's a valid to. point. Right, I'm going to throw the ball straight back in your court. When we continue to say, have you understood, and not one person bothers even to look at us or respond, you are treating us badly equally. You're not a company that feeds back. And this flag dance is a showstopper. It's absolutely amazing. But while ever there's one loose cannon in there, they'll see it. The public aren't stupid. I don't want to talk Van Lenock soon rejoins the other dancers in the next rehearsal. What do you want to know? We demonstrated a step to him. He then behaved like a five-year-old child and did it um, under protest. So I asked him why he was doing it at like that. You know, you can't go on stage being like a five-year-old and then they say they're being treated like children when they behave like children. What more can you say? Pat is still battling to rehearse five separate casts, and Max is the least experienced of the Romeos performing. And this will be the last rehearsal that Max will have with the entire company, just getting to know how it's going to feel and where, where is it going to be, the places where he feels absolutely exhausted. For stamina, it's part of the training. It's like running that extra bit. You know. How are you doing? Good. Yes. Very to go? Yes. Good. I don't want to stop you. If you want to stop, just stop. But I, I'm, even if I see things or well, something doesn't go right, I'd rather be pushed on to see how you'll get out of it. Max and his partner, Sarah McElroy, who plays Juliet, have never danced the whole ballet without stopping. This is putting it all together and it's also working out a way to pace it because there's so much of it, you can't waste your energy and like, you know, throw yourself about. The worst point, I think, for all the Romeos is the beginning of the Balcony Pas de Deux, when he first begins to partner Juliet, as opposed to dancing for, for joy. There's this really bad moment when they are practically legless because they're so, so tired. When you 
audience think, why don't we just bring the curtain down and <laughs> ask the audience to give us a break and we'll start again from the beginning. when they, exactly when they need to push on. <laughs> All right, pick it up while you're still out of breath because that's what it's going to be like, guys. Sorry to be unsympathetic. Yeah, push through. Second move. There is this scary moment for, for the Romeos themselves because it's like all your blood is concentrated around what's really essential, which is your heart and lungs, and it doesn't seem to get to the extremities. Continue, continue. And it's a horrible, horrible feeling. You suspect that they might have a heart attack at that moment. It's not too bad at all. Sarah, you need to go from the first moon again now while you're tired through to the end because it's the end that it gets ropey. Because you, you've, you've lost it by then. And you, this, is now, this is now when it's the most valuable, when you're knackered to get your strength and find out what you have to do. It's a ball breaker. It's a ball breaker. But this is how you get through it. It's doing it again now. So Max, put on a double drop strap. And they're going from the first move. Just don't panic. Accept the tiredness and use it. Yeah. It's harder when there's pas de deux because there's two of you that are tired. So, in a way, you're fighting each other. It's harder for the boy than the girl. I don't know why I'm complaining. <laughs> Everything goes a bit hazy and you're really tight. Really like you're running into just like a wall. But this, that's the beginning. <laughs> There's a lot more to go. Yeah, it's good that you did it over again. But try and push through now. Yeah. Yeah, even if you can't lift it, just get through it for stamina. And all of a sudden you'll find where your second wind comes from. After months of negotiations regarding the dancers' annual pay increase, both dancers and management meet with equity to make their final decision. Just to give you a context, what we're talking about at the, the climate, which is, which is why I'm not being stingy and not giving one one percent. Even giving one percent was really, really hard trying to also then accommodate 600,000 pounds in cuts across the organisation. I mean, the difficulty we have, of course, is dancers having to live Mm. Now, with inflation at 4.7%, I mean, albeit it's going down, it's still, you know, we've still got 1% against, so dancer salaries yes. are going to be eroded. A lot of arts companies have either had a freeze or, or they've cut staff, so we haven't yet done that. There's no magic solution to that problem, so we've agreed 1%, so we've taken off the additional 1%, the dancers decided they'd rather do Which that. Which we originally, uh, we originally asked for 2%, I um, think. Okay. So we'll accept 1%. Okay. Yeah, so that's sorted. So that's done, we all right. The biggest concern I've got really is the following three years. So it's already 10% less mm -hmm. next yeah. year, and they're talking about between 25 and 40% less. Ooh. On top of the 10. On top of the 10. Okay. Which is devastating. It's going to wreck things that are going mm. well. It's uh, and wrecking know, the it's... arts is, uh, is of no economic benefit. Although the committee got a majority of dancers to agree on the 1%, not everyone on the board is happy with the decision. I'm just one of many and I go with the majority and that's fine. You know. if we, I think it's better to have them on side. 
But it doesn't change anything. The tricky situation is that we're negotiating by hypothesizing, and that led to us going, okay, whatever you say. I don't that's think we said, doing. okay, whatever you say, but that's... No, but we did, no? They no, offered no, not quite, I think. And we accepted. Yeah, because that was a sensible thing to do, but not by saying, we'll just do whatever you want. I don't think that no, that's, that's how what we said. No, no, but that's what we're doing. I've got to go bust my body. All right, see you later. Yeah, you know, I've seen a lot of changes over the years. You're saying, I'm sure there's going to be massive cuts. And if you're right, then you're right. If you were wrong, and if there were no cuts, then we've just taken a 4% cut for no reason. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Exactly. And I don't know. See you later. After a month of rehearsals, the dancers go on tour with Romeo and Juliet. Over the next three weeks, the company will perform 20 shows in venues across the United Kingdom. Max's debut as Romeo is in Southampton. The cast have just one dress run left before their performance. But the gruelling rehearsal schedule is now taking its toll. Oh my God. Mentality is not good because we feel we feel that we don't have ta enough time to rest. We rehearse every day, but it's life. Injuries mean ballet staff are struggling to put together a fit enough cast. Yeah. Chang's not going to be on. Chang, right. So. OK. Chang is playing Mercutio, a major role in the ballet. Just curl forwards. Tell me when the pain keeps in. <laughs> it's there already? Yeah. OK. We've got a cute spasm there. Actually, he won't be able to do the rehearsal, which means if he doesn't do the rehearsal, he can't do the show. So I've swapped it round. So Juan's now got three, three Mercutios in a row. If you've got 24 men in the company and six, seven are off, that's a third of the company. So, um, you know, uh, it will have implications for casting over the next couple of days. Jane came up to the dressing room to tell me that I have to do Mercutio now. She asked me to do it. Now I have to do it every day. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. <laughs> because it's really hard. The makeshift cast finally arrive on stage to get everything in place for the big night. For Max, it's his last chance to perfect the role of Romeo. Pace yourself. Basically today is just trying to make it work in this theatre and space it. do as much as we can, but without killing ourselves. Max is his first Romeo. To be honest, he went a little bit too crazy. The sword fights didn't go very well. He got my finger. I've got a really painful shoulder. Max did say afterwards he's going to calm it down for tomorrow, but I don't think so, because once the audience are in, it's the show, I imagine it'll probably be twice as wild. <laughs> be a bit dangerous. Praying to the gods of ballet at the moment to let it just go back to normal again. You put your thumb in it. Just hold it, like, find the spot. Because that's the, that's the arm I'm fighting with, so it's gone into spasm. But you did a, a full rehearsal yesterday, didn't you? So you, the legs are a bit. I get to a point, and then it kind of doesn't get any worse. Yeah. 
good. And fluid in that, it would take... Yeah. You, you, need to, you need to drink. Hey. Yeah, good. All right, don't worry about it. Thank you. He's exhausted because he did a full call. He did every scene yesterday just to get it over and done with. Um, and now his legs are really, you know, just too tight at the moment. And he's not taking enough liquid on. So he's finding it uh, quite difficult at the moment. Although Max has given his all, he still has more to learn as he meets the staff to hear his final set of notes. Then something I thought in the Wheel of Fortune... I started you, in the wrong place. <laughs> yeah, you started in the wrong place. You were fine, you went blood. Then you did another thing with him yeah. that I think was Too you much. don't need to do. And stay in the light with Loretta. Basically, that's all I've got. Um, it feels like it's kind of coming together. Yeah. I feel you need to know that you elaborate on the positions. It was a little bit fast. Um, all the sittings on the floor, you need to have a whole dialogue going. Um, the second act, when you're sitting there, imagine your cheekbones are illuminated. Max has over 30 corrections to address, and no rehearsal time left before tomorrow's performance. Oh God, I'm not going to finish this. How do you take it all in? You kind of need a pen and paper, but you, you're not going to have a pen and paper on stage, so it's not really worth writing it down. It's got to be in here, and if it's not in there, then it's just not going to happen. It's 11.30 at night, and Daniel is back in his digs, accompanied by his wife Kay, who is also in the cast of Romeo. It's their first chance to eat a proper meal. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm shattered. But my challenge was to get back from the knee injury, and now I'm back and I'm doing rolls. I don't want to think about stopping. <laughs> I want you to stop when you feel comfortable stopping. I want you to be happy when you stop. You know, when, it, when the time comes and I do stop, I mean, I'm, I, I've been preparing myself mentally since I got into the company for the time that I would stop dancing. I mean, it's just, you have to. It's, it's terrifying, but it's just the way it is. Whatever profession I go into next, I'm going to have to work just as hard to get the respect. I will never be satisfied just working at the lowest of the, you know, and just being in the corps de ballet of an office. I just hope I've got enough in the body for tomorrow because we did a lot yesterday and now we've run it, it's, I'm going to wake up tomorrow feeling like I've been hit by a train. I'm not going to sit here and, and go over a million things, otherwise I'll never sleep and you can go over and over and over it forever and I'll, it'll just be a nightmare. It's Max's debut performance, and there's a full cast warming up on stage. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is it you today? Oh, I thought give it a go. <laughs> well, you might as well. My only bit of advice is to you, don't shoot yourself in the foot straight away. Just get your, establish your character, take your time. All you've got to save it for is the balcony. Don't go over the top in the beginning. The problems we have today, the nerves, he's out to impress, he's out to impress us, he's out to impress his colleagues. Um, so the problem would be that he could do too much in the first entrance and before he even gets to the balcony, which is the heart attack, pardon her, and he'll have nothing left. My hands are sweating like crazy right now. And my first entrance, I come on with all the swords and I, I'm just very, I just don't, once I don't drop those swords, then I'll be a little bit more relaxed. Get it into, every time you turn your back, get into the, get it into your legs. Yeah, I'm ready, I'm just gonna go for it. It's, nah, I couldn't hear him. In Max's position, I mean, because this is his first major role, he's definitely on probation. And if he doesn't get the steps right, and he doesn't get the character right, then it will affect his future totally with his company because he won't be considered for other roles.
I mean, you're very alone. It's like all about you. You have to kind of keep a sense of calm and like less is more. Call the ballet, doing a principal role. It's a big deal. There's no way of beating around it really. It, it is, and I want to do it as well as I possibly can. I've always wanted to do this role. I now have half a second where I stopped and it's the first time in the show. I have to keep myself moving, like if I sit down, that is it. Max's marathon is just beginning. He's going to be dancing the balcony scene with Sarah non-stop for six minutes. For them, the most technically challenging part of the ballet. This is the scene they struggled to complete in rehearsals. You have to kind of breathe and think down into the floor and everything pulls up so much with adrenaline. You get rigid. It's like drowning. I'll just go for it 100% and when I die on the bed will probably be when I die properly. After three months of speculation, news finally arrives from the Arts Council, confirming the level of funding cuts to English National Ballet. Craig sends an email to the company announcing the final figure. We thought we'd be cut by about 10%. We're only being cut by 7%, but the problem is, it's still bad. The government will tell us in probably March of next year how we're going to be funded for the following three years, and that will definitely be a greater cut. So it's going to be very difficult to work out how to keep doing what we're doing. We have to at least look at restructuring, which means redundancies. When you start to analyse it, you think, am I a sucker? I know, we've been taken for a ride. The, the psychology is quite good, where you you know, it's announced that you're going to get a really big cut, then you get a smaller cut, and you're so grateful. We're thrilled. It's only 7%. You know, so, yeah. so it still, you know, it still affects the amount of touring we do. Mm. Four weeks on tour. Mm. Eventually, I'm the one that has to say, I know this is your dream, this is a dream job, but we can't afford to fulfill your dream. That's, that's an awful thing to have to say to somebody, because it's somebody's livelihood. <laughs> I didn't have to act. And you went, oh, I went outside. It was good. I can't feel my body right now. I have so many more injuries from that scene. Um, we're nearly there. I've got two more entrances. I'm absolutely naked. I've like bent my finger back, so it's like throbbing. Something in the bottom of my pelvis feels funny. I'm, I'm absolutely on my last legs. I've got blood. Nothing I've got blood coming out of my tights, but 
I don't that's, know. That's from th throwing yourself on the floor yeah. in the fight. I can't take my tights off until the end, so I'm only going to know what I've done. I've got the shoulder. And the shoulder thing, yeah. I'm seeing Don't, I'm, I've got to see Dominic now because I've, I've got, got a massage at 5.45 in between, so, and then i got to do this again. So. You're after me in the massage. Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. So, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, my, my body's... I've got to yeah. do the servants tonight. So you're doing this. I'm doing this. Servants. It's a killer. This was a bit twingy down the bottom, which normally means it's slightly out of alignment. And it's just really tight on this side down the bottom, side. just like. It be interesting to see if this is an integer. Wow, Max, mm -hmm. you're level. Are you joking? <laughs> see, um, I have a contract. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. There's got to be something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Well, your My finger's actually... really sore. <laughs> yeah. Your back is really... <laughs> it's moving better than it normally does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's had a bit of an injury in the thoracic, so he's <laughs> had a bit of a spasm. English National Ballet are delighted with Max's performance, and he will now be considered for future leading roles. Following his triumphant return to the stage as Tybalt, Daniel got a hernia in his next performance. <laughs> That's pretty much the right thing for me. Okay. He is unable to dance for at least six months. It is the biggest money spinner that we have, it's the Nutcracker. So this show has to be a huge success. He goes for, no, whoa, 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 whoa. Bell is not finished. We ain't finished. It's a bit too late to do anything. We don't know what's gonna happen when the show starts in 20 minutes. <laughs> I get it'll be okay, but it's never okay. I actually don't know the steps yet. You'll survive this. I don't survive bad reviews. 